Welcome to Follow Me Exercise. This is the Stretch and Range of Motion Part 3, Back and Legs. Please be sure to consult with the physician before starting this or any other exercise program. Failure to do so could lead to injury and or health problems. All right, let's do some spinal range of motion. Again, this is not necessarily stretching. This is just for outright flexibility or really warming up for the spine for the rest of the um, exercises that we're going to do. So let's go ahead and spend a minute and some time. All right, let's do standing rotations. You can go like this with the hands on the hips, but I don't find that that's particularly good to do because then you tend to not go through full range. If you have a broom or a stick, it's kind of helpful to grab hold of that when doing this. Or putting the arms out completely. Good, let's go into the quadruped lat stretch. Let's check that camera to make sure good position so you can see. All right, so you're gonna be in quadruped, which is all fours. Obviously, be on a surface that's appropriate, matted, soft carpet, yoga mat, etc. And you're gonna bring your arms out like this. And you're gonna sit back onto your butt. And you're going to be holding that position. That's what it looks like. Let's get the timer up. And again, if you had to pause it to go get yourself a mat or get to an appropriate location, uh, that's perfectly fine. Just come back and join me. And you're going to feel the stretch in your lats, your latissimus dorsi, that is the muscle that is on the back that connects up into your arm. So it's this wing-like muscle back there. Of course, now I don't get a full stretch on my right because I showed where the muscle was. Doing exactly what I told you not to do, which is not to hold the stretch for a minute. And this stretch also gives a little bit of an added stretch to your lumbar spine as well. extension exercise. This is just pushing. If you find that this is too much
to arrange, just be down on your elbows and forearms. I got used to get up to this position. And hold it there. Again, do not go where it's painful. If it's painful, you're going too far. Back off from that position to just the position that you feel the stretch in. Don't get enough into doing your work day in general. Next, I have the where am I, Cobra? Oh, double knee to chest. We're gonna go through the opposite, get into a flex position. Basically, double knee to chest is exactly what it said, what, what it sounds like. It looks like this. Your lumbar spine is getting into a flex position, getting a little bit of a stretch down there. This is not a very aggressive stretch. It shouldn't be an aggressive stretch. If you have knee problems, you don't necessarily want to be holding it like this. Holding it underneath is better. You don't also have to grip your own hands. You can grab like this. Again, the motion that we're doing here that's important is the lumbar spine, not what you're doing with your arms. Right? Any of these positions are fine. This one would probably be, I guess, the safest. I do find that a lot of people are not really flexible enough to start yoga. So this is almost a pre-yoga uh, stretching and conditioning program. If you can't do these stretches and you're having problems doing these stretches, don't start a yoga problem. Don't, or don't start a yoga program. You're not going to be able to handle it. Yoga is actually very difficult. Uh, spine rotation stretch. Lower rotation. Uh, there's different names for this, but that's just the one I'm going to be using. Let me demonstrate first. Basically, you're in a, on your back, feet are flat, knees are bent. Knees are going to go to one side. Your pelvis is going to come up and go the direction that the knees are. This creates a rotation in the lower part of the spine and gives you a stretch there. This is one in particular that is helpful to do deep breathing in. I'm going to start the timer now. If you want to come out of it a little bit early, that's okay. I feel that this one is a great one for me. There's variations on this one in which you extend out the leg and it stretches out more. That's all right. You can also put your hand on, on the leg to push it over at this point. Real basic program, just bringing the knees over. Is sufficient. If you feel like you're really flexible and you can do more and go and put that leg straight out and over or put on over pressure with the other hand, feel free. But right now I'm just doing a real basic stretch. Again, throughout this, just deep breathing. Deep breathing to go further into it. Make sure you wake up from this one, because this one can put you to sleep. Oh, that will always keep you awake, won't it? Other direction, same thing. We're not doing it for two. There we go, there's the one. Just holding it in that position. And I'll show you the more advanced version is putting the leg out, goes over further, using the hand for overpressure. An even more advanced version of this is to turn the upper body in the other direction. But again, just this is sufficient. Trying to keep the shoulder down, knees to the side, and just holding that position. And this is all these back exercises and stretches, they're very important for the spine. Uh, 
basically if you have back pain, your life is miserable and everything else kind of shuts down and doesn't really matter that much because everything's more difficult when you have back pain. You can't move around and do much anything when you have back pain. And uh, it's one of the leading causes of people losing work and being disabled is back pain. Uh, let's go to the seated hamstring stretch. And back up here. This is the position to be getting into. We're going to be doing one hamstring at a time. Doing two is more difficult. I'm going to be keeping myself up straight in this position and then trying to lean forward. But it's not a lean forward where I'm leaning my back bend. I'm keeping my back straight. So I only have to go this far until I feel a hamstring stretch. I don't have to go and put my uh, forehead on my knee. I don't necessarily have to go and touch my toes. Just as long as I'm feeling the stretch here, that's far enough. If you can go ahead and put your forehead to your knee, if you can reach out and touch your toes, go for it as so long as it's comfortable. But that is not the point. The point is go to the range where you feel the stretch and hold that stretch. I know it sounds like a broken record, but that is just the way it works. I know it's not the most interesting video. Again, it's not a lot of jumping around and cardio and kickboxing or lifting heavy weights, but if you don't have the range of motion down to begin with, all those other things aren't gonna happen. If you don't have basic stability, in your muscles and in the groups that count, all the other exercises that I'll be having on my, show, on my, my channel or any other exercise program or even just functional movement, it just all goes away. You have to have the range of motion first. Other side. arguments in literature that say, oh, if you do exercise, if you do stretching, there's no difference in uh, injury occurrence or not. And, okay, that's fine, but there's a lot of evidence in the PT literature that if one thing works, there'll be a study that shows that that was wrong. So I try to tend to not just go with just literature and always the science, but also just works for patients because Hey, if it works for the patient and they're happy and they're getting good results and uh, we follow the basic clinical guidelines and the basic science, it's all right. Um, particularly uh, in the populations that I work with, I, I work with very disabled people for uh, most of my career and sometimes what is, uh, there is no written case study for that particular patient. Maybe for the diagnosis, but not for that individual. Uh, ah, abduction. Basically, you're going to get into a stretch position, a split position like this, legs apart, nice and far, and bending forward. Basically, just trying to do the splits without having to get yourself into a dangerous splitting position. So my legs are apart, I'm bending forward a little bit. Trying to stay in camera. And again, you might see people taking their forehead bending forward. You might see people doing a full split. That is not the point. The point is get to the range that you feel that you feel the stretch in where your stretch is comfortable, hold and maintain that. The reason why those people that you're seeing that can do those kinds of uh, flexibility is because they've been doing it for a very long time. They understood the idea of being consistent. Uh, Taekwondo uh, practitioners in particular have amazing flexibility in terms of their splits. Uh, ballet, football players, kickers in particular, uh, They've been doing it a long time. That's why we see them do that. 
That's why they can they can. Uh, seated dorsiflexion. What is dorsiflexion? You might add. You might ask. Uh, it's this. It's bringing the toes up and down. Up is dorsiflexion. Down is plantar flexion. So we're putting it into a plantar flex position in order to stretch the front of the shin. So basically I'm getting into this position here. And I'm just getting that kind of a stretch. And uh, you'll see this position actually done a lot in uh, Japanese culture. They do a lot of um, activity more so than Westerners at a floor-like level. Uh, they don't always just, uh, especially in traditional uh, Japanese households, they have a table that's at this height, and everybody sits like this. So for a Westerner, they'll come into that situation, try to get into that position, and they can't handle it because they've never gotten into that position before, and their shins end up just being overstretched and they can't tolerate it. There's a certain amount of, um, that I've heard that uh, younger Japanese that don't get into this position as much because they're more westernized, they're sitting at tables and chairs and sitting in desks at school and such, uh, they have a problem getting into this position as well. All right, we're going back up again. Enough with the floor. We're going to do the last stretch that I have, which is the standing calf stretch. This is done one at a time. It's basically pushing down the wall. One foot forward, one foot back. Calf getting a stretch like this. Again, going to the point where you feel stretch, not to the point where you feel pain. Let's go ahead and do one side, getting a good stretch. And of course, if you just wanted to jump around to see the different stretches that I did, that's okay. But do try to go through and add in these type of stretches to your workouts at all times. Uh, very often I would go into any kind of commercial gym and I would never see uh, the majority of the members ever stretch. The men in particular. I just don't understand why not. They just it's just easier for them to hop on the treadmill, lift a couple of weights on machines, and then head out. And it's, they're just not, that's good, but they're doing themselves a big dis, disfavor by not addressing range of motion, not addressing flexibility. It is a part of fitness. It is a part of health, particularly as you get older. The more you can keep your joints and musculoskeletal system flexible, the better. And once again, stretching the calf. Again, just try to pushing down the wall. You're not actually pushing down the wall. You're not actually providing any force. Your hands are just resting here. If you don't have a wall available, you can always just put your hands on your on your thigh and go forward. Again, this is not necessarily the program for everybody. This is not necessarily the great position for somebody who has knee problems to try to get into this position. It might be too much for you. Um, this is again more for healthy ambulatory population. There are other stretches to do. One, almost, there's a, quite a lot of variation. I won't say infinite variation, but there's a lot of variation uh, for just about any exercise or muscle group. participating for watching be sure to like subscribe check back with the channel uh, when you subscribe you get updated on your YouTube feed when I'm posting a new video I'll try to keep videos being um, posted on a regular basis but I'm busy and can't always do it but in any case see you next time bye bye